Good evening. Hello. Uh, my name is Nick Hostetler. I live at 1140 North Pinecrest. Uh, I'm here today to speak in regards to the city's upcoming budget process and to strongly encourage the commission to carve out space in the budget to provide tenants the right to counsel in eviction cases. Every single city, county, and state in this country, of which there are several, has enacted ten that has enacted tenant right to counsel laws has seen an immediate and substantial drop in evictions the following year. Preventing these evictions has many benefits for our community. Much has been made of our city's struggle with homelessness. I would remind us that it is almost always easier and cheaper to fix the problem or to prevent a problem from happening than it is to fix the problem after the fact. Reducing evictions will keep people off the street, reducing the strain on the city's other homelessness programs and providing savings for the city. I work in an elementary school in town and I see firsthand the consequences that evictions have on families with young children. Students with unstable housing who occasionally use our facilities at school for basic necessities such, such as showering have virtually no chance of being successful academically. Most of the work we do with these children is behavioral, simply attempting to allow them to deal with the stresses of homelessness and poverty without lashing out angrily at adults or other students. Their parents are less engaged in their schooling than the parents of their peers, and it does not take long before we see them fall behind frequently to never catch back up. I cannot think of anything I would rather my tax dollars go to than to prevent even one family from being kicked out onto the street. Please fund the Right to Counsel program. Thank you. Good evening. I'm here in my yellow shirt with Bozeman Tenants United. I'm here fighting for a tenant's right to counsel. So. I used to be a courtroom clerk for district clerk for district court. So I would sit beside the judge and it was district court. So we would deal with felonies. So people would come before the court and even though they were wearing an orange jumpsuit and shackles, they could look the judge in the eye with dignity because they knew they had the, they had the confidence of knowing that they had competent legal counsel. They had a public defender, their Sixth Amendment right. They had someone smart wearing a suit who spoke the mysterious language of the law, and they would get you know a fair trial, a fair outcome. This is not the case with evictions. So how do I know this? Like I said, I was a courtroom clerk. I took it upon myself to look up every single eviction that took place in Bozeman in 2023. What I discovered was that 93% of tenants had no lawyer at all. They were pro se, self-representing. Um, unsurprisingly, 82% of tenants in Bozeman lost their case and were evicted. This is not the administration of justice. This is a mockery of justice. So I want to illustrate what it's like to show up in court with no lawyer. So this is a filing from one of an eviction case. His landlord's lawyer filed a 10-page legal brief with allegations and legal arguments. This guy, a, a tenant, a pro se tenant responded. All he says in his, in the answer to the eviction complaint is, I disagree with my landlord's assessment of the situation. That is not a legal argument. That's nothing. That's, that's what people are pleading the court right now. Um, another statistic I want to bring up, a quarter of tenants had default judgment entered against them. That means they either missed their court date, they were too scared to show up, they didn't know what to say, and so regardless of the facts of the case, regardless of whether the eviction was illegal, it didn't matter. Default judgment, they were evicted. Um, that's a quarter of all tenants. So yeah, this is a, a gross miscarriage of justice, and now is a time for you, the city commission, to show some leadership, and how's the people? Um, I will give you some copies of my report. I would really appreciate if you looked through this. Um, and that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for your time. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, my name is Leona Alvarado. I'm a member of the Bozeman Tenants United. I'm a 55-year-old disabled homeless single mom in Bozeman. Why? I live on a very fixed income. Why don't I leave? Because my family is here. I love the area. And I can't afford to leave. 
I was born and raised in Montana. 10 years ago, I was able to rent a, a two-bedroom apartment for $685. Today, that same complex here in Bozeman, the apartments rent for $2,000 plus a month. I cannot find an apartment, let alone a room to rent in Bozeman. My family has been homeless in Bozeman, and now they pay more than 30% of their household income for rent in a month. My grandchildren want a stable home. I have been evicted four times in my life. I was living with my two-year-old daughter in another state when I was evicted the first time. It was informal, but they raised the rent to a point where I couldn't come up with the extra money. They took me to court, and my daughter and I ended up living in hotels for six months. The second time, my brother kicked me out. Power trip. The third time, we got behind on the rent due to vehicle issues. I tried to pay the rent. They wouldn't accept it, and they evicted us. The fourth time was my brother again. Housing is the most sought after commodity in the United States. Corporate landlords take money from the American people to line their pockets and bank accounts. Instead of supporting Americans who are experiencing being stuck between high rents and low wages, our government funds war and the police. Food bills decrease out of necessity. Medications are skipped and necessities are cut to pay rent. When I see others getting specific benefits or resources paid for by the government, I feel upset with the way our tax money is being spent. However, I realize it, is only, it only benefits the wealthy for the working class to argue over, sorry, who deserves what resources more. We need our tax money spent on solutions that make the people of Bozeman safer and address the problems at the core. As the cost of living continues to rise, it affects housing the most. If you, are in, if you have unstable housing, you can expect to experience sleepless light, nights, dietary changes, anxiety, and increased chronic pain. Children spending time unhoused or in unstable living conditions all right, thank you. Good evening. Hello and good evening, town council members. My name is Lori Foreman, and I am a tenant at Darlington Manor. I have also been a landlord. I am at a below poverty level now a citizen of Bozeman. I came to be here as after I was injured working for a Yavapai Apache tribe. I looked, I took them to court and represented myself. I know I was right, but they had the law firm. If I had had an attorney, I would have I would have not lost my family, my home, and my business. I'd like to talk about the monies of Bozeman. If we are going to keep homeless problem down, we should start with the tenant's access to legal help. The landlords have legal help 79% of the time. And while the tenants have legal help only 7% of the time. What these funds will do will give the tenants sound legal advice and allow them to open communications with their landlords and maybe resolve problems. In closing, people and their families have a better chance of staying in their homes and not becoming a homeless person. Last but not least, homes are the foundation all people. 
understand. So we turn to you. And to say yes to the tenant's right for legal counsel. Good evening. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Elise. I am a Bozeman resident and I am a leader of Bozeman Tenants United. And I am here to urge you to fully fund the Tenants Right to Counsel program. I believe in this program because I have witnessed firsthand what the courts are like at a very young age. When I was 14, my father was in an accident while snow plowing caused by a malfunction in his vehicle, an accident that would take his life. And for the subsequent three years, my family would go through a long and grueling process to get the workers' comp that was owed to us. I won't get into the details of the case, but needless to say, it was stressful, terrifying, and I wish my family didn't have to go through that. My mother especially shouldn't have had to defend herself in court while being recently widowed and having to take care of two children who were barely teenagers. And for two children who have just lost their father to give testimony in an alien and unfamiliar setting. I tell this story because I am thankful we had legal counsel in that case. Because if we didn't, there would have been no way we would have gotten justice and having a newly single mom have to navigate an environment like, by, like that by herself would have been an unbelievably cruel thing to do. The courts are a mess. They are confusing, intimidating, and if you don't have the proper tools, you might as well not show up because if you don't know what to do, you will not win. People and. That is what we are asking people of Bozeman, because last year when cases went to court, 79% of landlords had lawyers, whereas only 7% of tenants did. And it's not a surprise why that is. It's money, plain and simple. In this chaotic world where Bozemanites are having to deal with more and more expenses, worrying if you're going to have a roof over your head is a very tangible fear. In Maricopa County, Arizona last year, over 600 people died due to, he due to heat stroke, and almost half of those people, 290, were homeless. In Bozeman, we have very similar extreme weather, which can get to the below 40s and cold snaps. Last year, we had eight people die in homelessness. I believe that the residents of Bozeman deserve better. We deserve the right to stick up for ourselves and not let money be the reason we lose our homes. So far, 17 cities and five states have passed the right to counsel, and we have seen good numbers. And that makes me think of that, that these people who show that they did not deserve to be evicted, then by not having this program, we are allowing potentially innocent people to be evicted from their homes, and that thought scares me. I believe Bozeman is a leader. By showing Bozemanites they deserve better, they deserve respect, they deserve to be protected by the law just as much as anyone else, Bozeman would be showing the rest of the state that we are a proactive city that respects its citizens and that, we, that other cities need to follow our lead to help their tenant communities. I end with this. You say you want to help Bozemanites with affordable housing. Well, a part of that is making sure that they are able to keep the housing they already have. So if that is what you want and what you say you value, then you should fully fund the Tenants' Right to Counsel program. Thank you. Good evening. Hello, my name is Hiller Brown. And I'm listening tonight to all these people, and there's a lot of taxpayers. <coughs> who it's good to see you all. Thank you for being here. All right, my name is Philip Zemke, and I live at 31 Bedivere Boulevard in Bozeman, Montana. I came to Montana to Bozeman 41 years ago to be a teacher and, and I've served many different, I've been a minister, I've been a therapist, I've been the hospice chaplain up at the hospital. I love Bozeman. When I first came, I wanted to know how to be a Bozeman citizen. So I went to the uh, Rocking R Cafe, it was called the Cowboy Cafe then. And I sat with the ranchers. Some ranchers had 1,000 acres, some ranchers had tens of thousands of acres, and they all smelled alike, looked alike, and talked alike. I asked them, how do you be a citizen in Bozeman? And they said, you give the pedestrians the right of way, you smile at everybody you meet, and when there's a need, you help. Bozeman, was then a town where there were not a lot of distinctions. You were a citizen of Bozeman, 
You were a respected person, and you were given every opportunity to succeed. Tenants' rights. What's its use? The legal system is a language of its own. It's a specialty language. It's very difficult if you're not familiar with that language to be competent in running the race there. If we really truly want each other to succeed, we, when we get into these specialized language areas, we want to have a person have the language to have the support to be treated right, fair, as a good citizen. Eviction stuff runs all over. There's warranted evictions, of course, and there are some that aren't. That conversation between two lawyers may be the place where that can be worked out. I would hope that everyone in this community could feel that when they bump up into the legal system, that there is some way that they can feel comfortable, that they are being treated with respect. We're here to trust each other, friends. We're not here to, to chop each other up. We're here to listen to each other. We're storytellers. Let us listen to our stories and let us do it around this eviction issue as well. Thank you very much. Good evening. Hi, my name is Trisha Wookie. I am here to talk about the Fowler issue, but I would also like the our city managers to think about how we are growing this Good evening. Good evening. Please excuse my voice, it's allergy season. My name is Connie Howell and I'm a resident of Bozeman. Early in 2000, there was a knock on the door of my home. A sheriff's deputy and the landlord were there with an eviction notice. My husband, daughter, and I lived in that mobile home park for a year and a half. Nikki was in the second grade. We watched our landlord evict our neighbors without good cause. Standing up for them when they did got us evicted. We tried to find a lawyer, but we couldn't afford one to take our case. Only 6% of the tenants in Boston can afford a lawyer, meaning that 94% of the tenants go unrepresented, as we did. In 74% of the evictions, the landlords are represented. If tenants are unrepresented, it's hard to know if the evictions being served are lawful. We did not know what to do. During this time, I was also struggling with a closed head injury received in a four-car pileup. I had been in several months prior. Between the head injury, the stress, the anxiety, I was in and out of the mental health unit. We became homeless. We stayed with family and friends for some time. Then that summer, we found ourselves camping in the National Forest Campground. We ate peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because that's all we could afford. We lost upwards of $12,000 in this debacle. I had lost my established business. My daughter, Nikki, still does not talk about that time, and she's 32. I regret and resent not being around more for my husband and my daughter. We moved to Bozeman that September because Chris got a good job, but we still could not find a housing. We spent upwards of hundreds of dollars with property rent uh, management companies that would not rent to us because we had an eviction on our record. Tenants having a right to counsel, to have a lawyer, would have made all the difference to my family and to the families living in Bozeman. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Eva Molina. I live at 1104 South Montana Avenue. And I'm here to voice my support for the Tenants Right to Counsel program. Some great statistics have already been presented before the commission. 
And I want to add that polls have shown that more than 80% of voters in the US are in favor of such a program. I personally feel a pang of despair when I see how our community ignores our unhoused neighbors. We often think there is just nothing we can do to help. But I know this program will actually help by keeping our community safe and housed. Nationwide, up to 77% of folks who had a right to counsel got to stay in their home after legal support in court following an eviction notice. And this means that a lot of these evictions are just wrongful evictions. Tenants' right to counsel will stop the pipeline from eviction to homelessness here in a growing Bozeman. And so I urge you all to support a fully funded tenants' right to counsel and keep our community housed. For what are taxes for if we cannot protect our most vulnerable? Thank you so much for your time. Good evening. Evening, Commissioners, and thank you for hearing us. My name is Josh McCaffrey. I live at 618 West Babcock, and tonight I want to talk about justice. I enlisted at 19 and swore an oath to uphold and defend our Constitution, the Sixth Amendment of which provides one of our most important rights, the right to legal counsel, regardless of one's ability to pay for it. It would be unjust to throw someone into criminal court unrepresented because they were too poor to afford a lawyer. If a massive percentage of people were being tried without representation, that would be unconstitutional and un-American because justice should not be sold to the highest bidder. But here in Bozeman, an eviction can carry just as many hardships as a felony. Landlords will see an eviction in a person's record and deny them. In a city with already expensive, limited housing, that dooms people to the street. And in our city's eviction court last year, 79% of landlords had a lawyer. Only 7% of renters could afford their own counsel. The facts make it clear, 79 versus seven. The system in Bozeman is rigged in favor of money and landlords. We could fix this by establishing a city office of legal counsel and passing an ordinance that all renters taken to eviction court have the right to legal counsel. A fully funded program with three lawyers capable of representing all renters would cost about $670,000. That's not a significant amount of money in a budget of 31 million. Historically, we have spent four times that on a pool. What we do when confronted with injustice matters. I strongly believe in our constitution, but my opinion of the men who wrote it is tarnished because I know that they saw a massive injustice in the city they were in the country they were establishing, slavery, and chose to ignore it when they had the power to fix it. In the same way, you govern a city with a glaring injustice, and you have the opportunity to level the playing field between the 79% and the seven. The time you will spend as a commissioner is limited and finite. All of our time is limited, but the decisions that you make will outlive you. Like our founding fathers, when faced with a moral crisis, whether we confront it or ignore it will determine how we will be remembered. 17 cities, five states, and one county in America have already done this. You have heard our stories, heard the statistical fact, and heard the solution. How do you want to be remembered? Thank you. Good evening. 